So it's not always just shooting videos day to day. In fact, we get a lot of work that comes in that all the time. And most people ask me, one, how do you get that work? And more importantly, how do you bid this work? How do you price this stuff out? Well, today we've got two aluminum Air Zenith uh, uh, air tanks that just basically just got dropped off. Same day service, need them in and out, and they need to be an inch shorter. So how do we do that? Let's cover that right now. So my exact instructions on this one were to just take enough off to where I can still get a bolt in there and it shortens them out. So after a quick measurement, I decided on roughly an inch to an inch and a quarter is about all I need to take off of this so we can still access it with like a wrench and stuff like that. So uh, I'm going to start by cutting them all off. Nothing more than a cutoff wheel. It's not a special one or anything like that. It's not specifically for aluminum. It's just a cutoff wheel. I mean, it's not super particular here. So as soon as I get the pieces off here, I actually cut them relatively even on this one because I, I chased them out right right at the uh, the toes of the original welds that were on there and it, it basically uh, it got me really really close but at the same time we still need to kind of standardize about exactly how much cut we need to uh, you know put onto this or how much metal we need to remove so I'm going to measure from my bandsaw uh, the exact amount that I need to take off of there which was roughly an inch and uh, I think it was like an inch and three eighths is where I settled on uh, and that'll give us uh, enough room after we take down some more bevels and all the rest of that stuff so the easiest way that I've ever found to really do this is just to set up a little temporary fence in my bandsaw and just send them all slicing through there. That way it pretty much standardizes the exact amount that we have to take off of there. Now there are other ways of doing this. You could chase it out with a cutoff wheel or something like that, but accuracy just kind of goes out the window when you're chasing lines. Uh, but if you don't have a bandsaw, yes, there are other ways. So I'm just going to take uh, some of these burrs off of here. I know some people want to like beat my head in for using like the, you know, the cutoff wheel to do that, but it's just to scrape them off before I give them a final prep uh, before welding anyway. And when I set it on there, we see that we got about an inch and three-eighths that came off of it, which is just what I needed. Now I'm going to bevel the original welds on there. I'm not going to weld uh, into the tank just because those welds already exist and it's already leak free. So I'm only going to weld up to the welds. That way I don't have to worry about anything, you know, kind of going wrong. I don't have to worry about uh, them passing pressure testing or anything like that. If I'm welding onto an existing weld, it will more than hold, but still maintain the structural integrity of the tank itself. Uh, and we don't have to worry too much about it. So I'm going to set this up with the exact uh, placement that the original brackets had before. And to make sure that they're actually lined up right and kind of squared, uh, I'm going to use a flat bar just to kind of make sure that they're good before tacking everything. Now as long as it's all nice and flat and they're all lined up where they were before, we're good to go. And a good solid couple tacks, a few extra checks on the measurements, and we're pretty much set. Now I'm running about 165 amps or so out of this uh, machine right now. I need to get it nice and hot because the welds themselves are very thick, but the brackets themselves are not. I believe the brackets are about an eighth inch thick, but the welds themselves, they could be up to, I don't know, about three eighths plus plus the thickness of the tank. So it's going to absorb a lot of that heat and a lot of my focus has to go right on to the actual welds themselves and kind of wet it in and bleed it over. So here's pretty much the position that I've been sitting in to make sure that I get through all this one. I'm nice and rested. My hand is comfortable. Both hands, my feeding hand, my torch hand, my foot pedal is pretty much floored until I get to the end of the weld and I nailed it all pretty much in one shot. Just full throttle, about 165 amps or so the entire way through nice and clean, nice and steady, make sure that everything wets in and all the rest of that good stuff. That's really all we're after here. Now, of course, it's going to look like there's two welds stacked on top of each other because there are, but at the same time, again, we're not going to try and, uh, you know, hurt the uh, integrity of this tank. We still have to maintain that. So we're less apt to screwing things up or uh, having issues with pressure uh, or anything like that or leaks or anything when it already passed inspection with uh, the original welds already on there. So that's why we're just, again, welding just to the original welds. So here's your side-by-side, -side, one shortened, and there's the original one. Looks like it. Uh, this will do the job. No problems here. So after another quick inspection and a pressure check, we're good to go. Now the magic formula everybody's been asking about. How do you price out a job? Well, it's really simple. Charge an hourly rate. You usually, uh, after you do a few of these or you kind of get an idea about how long each weld is or so, you can say, well, you know, I know that's going to take me about an hour. So what's your hourly rate? It becomes your hourly rate plus the materials you used. Now, if you only used a little bit of filler rod on this one and some argon, just a tiny bit, eh, well, whatever, you can call that free. Just charge by the hour, maybe charge by the weld. 
you can probably go, oh, let's see, there's uh, $10 a weld, there's eight welds you have to do here. Well, there's 80 bucks. That's pretty simple. Or you could just say 80 bucks for the whole job, 100 bucks for the whole job, however much you feel is appropriate. But do be honest with yourself. If you suck at welding, you can't charge $80 an hour. You gotta really build up and work up to that. Now, how do you actually get recognized and put the word out there? Well, you guys are lucky. You got social media these days. You can get on Facebook, advertise weld repairs, Craigslist, local internet ads, all kinds of stuff. Just yourself easily available and say hey I can take care of this job but the most important thing if you can't do a job if somebody brings it to you or you look at it and you say well I'm not really sure don't risk it because there goes your cred right there because we got internet and social media so either way hope that helps you out a little bit of course we're gonna have more of these as you know as I have time to actually uh, shoot them all and all the rest of that good stuff but if you got any questions go ahead and drop them down in the comments box below if you need to get in contact with us you can hit us up on the Instagram at the dot fabricator the fabrication series.com website or facebook.com slash the fabricator series want to thank you guys for watching make sure you subscribe and ring that bell we'll see you guys on the next episode